Love it. So welcome everyone. Welcome to uh, our Wednesday call. We're going to talk about loving kindness. I hope Susan can make it today because Susan was the one that suggested that we practice and um, come back and talk about it. So I don't know if any of you, and I'm hoping if you do, you can just unmute or raise your, you know, come on camera. Um, did you practice the loving kindness at all in the last month or so? Oh, Judy, you did. Do you want to report anything, Judy? Yeah, um, well, I just found that it was a really nice way to just sort of think about things, just kind of, I don't know, just it appealed to me. It, it really just kind of hit home. It was a nice way to think about things. It was, that's how I liked it. Yay, I love that. Thank you. Welcome, Deb. Welcome, Dawn. We're talking about the loving kindness meditation. No one here is Diane. We'll let Diane in. Thank you, Judy. I love that. And we're going to talk about the science behind that so with our animal hey diane thanks so much hello. for hello uh, we're talking about the loving kindness meditation i'm just going to mute you um let me mute everybody uh so we have a clean recording so what i love about the let animals lead practice even though the loving kindness meditation is not a, a part of the um the let animals lead practice you're not going to learn the loving kindness if you take a class but what I love about the let animals lead method and a lot of the things that we practice on our own or that we talk about here, there's science behind them. So with the loving kindness meditation, there's actual, actually been many, many studies about the power of the loving kindness meditation in all aspects of what we do. Um, mantras, there's science behind why mantras work. Chanting, there's science behind why chanting works. Um, meditation in general, right? There's science behind why that works. So I get the question a lot. Oh, do you have any science or any studies about animal Reiki? Okay, well, no, we don't because there isn't enough interest yet by scientists. Although I think that there's been a couple done with mice. One was done and it was effective at reducing stress, animal Reiki was, but it was done using the more traditional Western form of Reiki. And it was done by inflicting pain on the, on the mice, which hello, we're animal lovers. We don't really support inflicting pain. Um, and then there was another study about meditation in animals and it was done in Eugene, Oregon. And that one was with mice and it was just how a meditative state can help a, a rat. Um, I should find that one again and, and actually contact the guy, but but when we're talking about meditation in general with animals, there actually have been a couple that have just come out during COVID about how the connection between a dog and their person um, increases through meditation. So that's a study that uh, we're going to talk about a little bit later on, and I'll, I'll provide all the information about that. But right now we're talking about loving kindness. And I just wanted to let you know that there is science behind every single part of what we do, just not science about the efficacy of animal Reiki in general. So hopefully that will happen one day. Hopefully um, Kathleen, Kathleen and I are one of um, somebody in our community, if you're interested in that, um, can reach out to some of these people and maybe we can get a study started. Kathleen and I and Kelly and a couple other of the Sarah community, we did an NIH study. Uh, the NIH study, they didn't, they didn't approve or really deny it. it. It just wasn't good enough for them because we didn't draw blood um, to test cortisol levels, which you kind of have to do. And we didn't have the funding for that. But there, they did say that there was some, you know, uh, legitimacy to the study. So I, I need to find that too and, and pull that back up so I can read it to you guys. But when we have science, when we have, you know, backing for what we do, it actually gives us validation. So when you teach the loving kindness uh, meditation to maybe somebody who is a non-believer, you can say there's actually science behind what we do. Sue, I don't th think I said welcome to you. So thank you so much for joining us. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the scientific studies. And I have to get my glasses on here. 
about the scientific studies and what the loving kindness meditation can do. So really quickly, the loving kindness meditation is a meditation that has been used since, oh my gosh, before Buddha um, was even in existence. So loving kindness came pre-Buddha. They dated it back about 2,500 years to India. So it has really strong ancient roots, right? Everything in the let animals lead practice has ancient roots. The, the meditations that we do can be traced back, some of them at least a thousand years, some of them a little bit further. So it's the tried and true thing, right? If you if something's worked for a thousand years or 2,500 years, you kind of have to stop and go, hmm, maybe there is something to this. So I want to share with you what science says about this because it's so fascinating. And I, you know, so I've I've done like research and pulled all these different studies. And then I found this amazing link that had 18 studies on loving kindness. And they were all the studies that I found. I'm like, oh, I wish I would have found this sooner. So I'm going to send you the link to this article um, because it has all 18 of these amazing studies that reinforce why we do the loving kindness meditation, how you don't have to do it for an hour, even less than 10 minutes is effective and why we should be doing it, right? If we want results in our life, if we're feeling anxious or we're feeling all these other things, the loving kindness is one of the easiest meditations that we can do. Although I'll be honest, when I first learned the loving kindness meditation years and years and years ago, it seemed awkward to me and it seemed very hard, right? Sending love and kindness to someone that I'm not um, in line with, in sync with, felt weird and in, inauthentic. And I don't know, I just had a problem with it. And this was really up until just not even that long ago, maybe a year or two ago, when I started it, doing it and my mindset was a little bit differently. I started to realize if I can send love and kindness to someone that is difficult, someone that is mean, someone that's narcissistic and doesn't care about anyone else, that it actually will help them to see a better way, right? Because the lack of love is what causes, and I see Anne's shaking, nodding her head, yeah, the lack of love is what causes people to do things that aren't necessarily nice. The lack of love causes kids to vandalize. The lack of love causes people to steal or to you know, um, act out in violent ways, right? It's a lack of love and understanding because again, everybody wants to see, be seen, heard and appreciated, right? And appreciation, love, those things when they're missing, that's when people act out. That's when people start to operate from a very selfish viewpoint. So if we can start emanating love and compassion, love and kindness to people that we don't necessarily get along with, we can actually start to heal that and, and help them start to feel loved and appreciated because it's an energy. We don't have to be in front of them. We can be thinking about them. Animals show us all the time that our energy hits them as soon as we think about them, right? Now, whether or not they want to interact with us, that's up to them. They have choice, but it's true that we connect with. Now, we humans are really numb to energy. We, it takes a lot for us to actually feel that energy, but on a subconscious level, we do start to feel it. We know it works. That's why a lot of times you take the animal Reiki classes and you might be like, I don't know if I'm doing this right, but there is a part of you that knows deeply that, yeah, this is kind of working. I can feel something, right? So, so when we're talking about the loving kindness meditation, it's something simple that you can do, but it's something very, very powerful that you can share, especially with people you're having a hard time with. And again, it doesn't have to be a long meditation. It can be like the script I use for loving kind kindness is, may I, you, we be happy. May I, you, we be safe. May I, you, we have peace. And may I, you, we be blessed with loving kindness, right? There's Jack Cornfield has one. It's kind of opposite. May I be filled with, you know, may I, we, it's, it's always I, we, or I, you, we, whatever that is. So he's saying, may I be filled with loving kindness. 
May I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. So there's all kinds of different you know, worksheets and, and scripts. I'm actually going to send you, there was um, a mental health place in Australia had a loving kindness meditation worksheet. And I thought it was really cool. So I'm going to send that to you too, just so you can kind of journal about it and practice it. And theirs was a little bit closer to mine, but again, there's lots of different ways. Find the one that resonates with you. Find the one that works. Um, there is no right or wrong. It's just basically, you know, you want to at some point in there say, may you be blessed with loving kindness or may you be filled with loving kindness or um, may you have loving kindness in your life. So I want to go over these, these scientific studies about loving kindness. Now, this is put out by, um, who are these people? It is the TMS wiki. So I don't know if this is a scientific wiki or not, but here are some of the studies that have come out on loving kindness. Um, and, you know, of course, one person that's made um, loving kindness very popular is Sharon Salzberg, and she even has a book on it. And then the author actually of this uh of the study list. Um, oh God, what is his name? Um, he did a TEDx talk, but there's a link to his TEDx talk. So there's lots of links in here, but I'm just going to kind of go over generally what the loving kindness meditation can bring for you. And let me just make sure nobody's joined us. Okay, great. Let me put this down here. So it increases positive emotions and decreases negative emotions. So we kind of know that it increases love, joy, contentment, gratitude, pride, hope, interest, amusement, and awe. So if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling out of touch with things, doing the loving kindness can make you feel reattached. It can decrease those negative, you know, like the negative um, spiral that you go into when you're sitting there talking badly to yourself and it can increase your positive emotions. So that's one of the, you know, benefits of doing it. Also, it increases our vagal tone, right? So our vagus nerve, is the nerve that goes down our body. It stimulates our parasympathetic nervous system. It's really important in calming us down. So um, they found that a study from 2013 found that individuals in a loving kindness meditation intervention, and they call the studies intervention, compared to a control group had increases in positive emotions and effect moderated by the baseline vagal tone, a psychological marker of well-being. When it comes to healing, we don't think about meditation or especially a meditation as simple as a loving kindness meditation as being able to help us heal. But actually there are studies that show that it decreases migraines. It decreased chronic pain. Um, they did a study where people had low back pain and the loving kindness meditation was associated with greater decrease in pain, anger, and psychological distress. So where do we feel pain when we're angry sometimes, right? When we have anger trapped in our body, that's dis-ease, right? So disease, and we can get pain in our back, pain in our neck, pain in our shoulders, frozen shoulders, right? When we're tense, we're doing a lot of work and we're tense and we're not like lubricating our shoulder. These things happen. So the loving kindness can help decrease chronic pain. It can decrease post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, 12 weeks of loving kindness meditation significantly reduced depression and PTSD symptoms associated amongst veterans. So this is something really powerful. Some of these I didn't even know. I mean, it's just, and we know that meditation does this. It's really about being focused, right? When we do our meditation, and that's why I like the loving kindness. It gives us a mantra that we can keep our thoughts and our mind on. And that's really powerful. It decreased schizophrenia spectrum disorders, disorders. So not necessarily schizophrenia, the full blown, but the spectrum disorder. They found that findings indicated that loving kindness meditation was associated with decreased negative symptoms and increased positive emotions and psychological recovery. Again, what is the main theme here? Loving kindness 
decreases negativity, increases positivity. I mean, that will make a difference in your life in so many different ways. So emotional intelligence in the brain, it also helps increase that. So it says regularly practicing loving kindness meditation can help activate and strengthen areas of the brain responsible for empathy and emotional intelligence. So when we talk about sending or offering loving kindness meditation to a narcissistic personality, and I'm thinking about my ex-brother-in-law, um, then if I'm sending him the loving kindness meditation, and it's taken me a long time, but I'm finally doing it, that maybe he can start to heal. And of course that can't be my intention, right? I have to send this to him with zero expectation that he is going to accept it and he's going to be okay with it, right? That's that's not what I, I can do because then my attachment and my judgment start to get involved. And then I'm really watering down the whole effect of the loving kindness meditation. But if I can let go and just offer this to him, then hopefully it will activate his empathy and emotional processing in the brain, which is what one study showed from 2014. And it also increases the gray matter in the areas of the brain uh, related to emotional regulation. So that's really cool too. So if you have a hard time regulating your emotions and hello, that's me, the loving kindness meditation can help us to start to be like, you know, not really high when we're happy and not really low when we're sad or not really, you know, upset when something bad happens or overly joyful when something good happens, right? You just want to be in that, oh yeah, this is great. Or, oh yeah, that sucks. You never want to be too high or too low because that's manic. So the loving kindness can help us regulate that. Um, there's also studies that show that the loving kindness meditation benefits benefits your psychological um, or psycho physiology and makes it more resilient. So this is really funny for those of us who hate aging. Those of us who are getting that that age, it increases the. Um, oh, just one second, Monica just joined, so I want to let her join really quickly. Hey, Monica. Thank you so much for joining us. We're talking about the loving kindness and the studies that are out there. So um, when we're talking about the stress response, right? Stress ages you, ladies. It ages you. It ages you a lot. There is a couple different ones. One is it increases the telomere length, a biological marker of aging. So it showed that women with experience in loving kindness meditation had a relatively long telomere length compared to age match controls. So they're saying throw out the expensive aging, anti-aging creams and get on the meditation, right? Start doing your loving kindness meditation because it's going to help you less or help you age a little less faster. But I thought that was pretty cool study. Um, it actually increases the respiratory sinus arrhythmia, so RSA. So RSA is an index of parasympathetic cardiac control, meaning your ability to enter a relaxing and restorative state, a very scientific way of saying it's a great way to get relaxed and um, into a restorative state. And then it slows your slows, meaning more relaxed, gives you a more relaxed respiratory rate. So if you're feeling like really anxious, right? You can use this to help bring you back into your body and help calm yourself. I mean, it's really quite fascinating. Social connections, loving kindness meditation, the studies have showed that it makes you um, a more helpful person. And it says here that it helps to enhance interpersonal attitudes as well as emotions. So they found that um, in the study, the effects of a loving kindness meditation on pro-social behavior um, compared to a memory control group, that loving kindness meditation group showed increased helping behavior in a game context. And I know um, that meditation in general makes you a more compassionate and helpful person, which is why I always crack up when people like my ex-brother-in-law, who is a narcissist, says, oh, he meditates and it's so helpful. And I'm like, you're not 
meditating. You're having an, what's called an adult timeout, right? People listen to Headspace. They listen to Calm. They listen to Insight Timer. That's a really nice thing. You're getting a, a timeout, right? Oh, okay. I have an adult timeout. I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm relaxing. But there's no intent, right? And there's no um, purpose behind the practice. There's no purpose to become more compassionate, no purpose to become um, more loving, more kind, right? So when people say they meditate and they're the biggest asshole on the earth, you're like, really? Are you meditating? Because I don't think you are. And what's really fascinating is there's only, there's over half a billion people meditating. And that was a study from, I don't know, like four or five years ago. There's probably even more now, probably a billion people meditating. But yet we live in one of the harshest, ugliest times. Look at all the wars that have started sprouting up, right? All of the intolerance um, in our political climate, um, the inability to hear each other speak. And again, the inability to give people what they need most, which is to be seen, heard, and appreciated. So when we can go into this loving kindness, when we can open our hearts up, we can really start to create global healing, but we have to do it and make it an intention. So it makes you a more help, helpful person. It increases your compassion. It increases your empathy. There's a study, and these all have studies connected to them. Um, then it also decreases your bias towards other people. So they found that compared to a closely matched active control condition, six weeks of loving kindness meditation training decreased implicit bias against minorities. So it decreased the bias against minorities. That's really important. If we can be sharing the power of the loving kindness more and more. I mean, we have a huge opportunity to start healing the world. It increases social connection as well. Um, people who, who did the loving kindness meditation uh, shared that they experienced more positive emotions and reported more gains in perception of social connection as well. Uh, it also helps us with our own self-love and really healing starts with us, right? We know this, if you're a student of the Let Animals Lead Method, it's why we focus a lot on ourselves because until we are healed, our energy is not going to be pure and it's not going to be helpful to the animals. So we have to start with self-love. So here's another really easy way to do it. Um, the studies have shown that it curbs self-criticism. Self-criticism is a huge one, especially for us women. So this is really great to hear that if we practice the loving kindness meditation, we're actually going to start reducing our self-criticism. When we reduce our self-criticism, we can be more kind and open to others, right? Because we're not going to have that insecurity. Oh, I don't want to talk to them or, oh, I don't want to share this. You know, we can stop that and start knowing, you know what? I am the right person to share this. I am the right person to teach this. I am the right person to have students and share loving kindness and, 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 and amplify, amplify that in the world. So um, there's an immediate long-term impact. So this is great too. The nice thing about the loving kindness meditation is that it has been shown to be effective in both immediate and small doses, meaning instant gratification, but that it also has long lasting and enduring effects. So in one um, study, they said that they found that a small dose of loving kindness meditation, meaning they practice it in a short session lasting less than 10 minutes, compared to a closely matched control study where they did a longer one, even just a few minutes of a loving kindness meditation increased feelings of social connection and positivities towards strangers. So just taking a couple of minutes, just like we do our all is well mantra, or like we do the precepts, just doing the loving kindness meditation for a very short period can create huge change within you and it has long-term impact. So another study from 2011 found that 35% of participants of a loving, loving kindness meditation study who continued to meditate and experience enhanced positive emotions, 15 or who continue to meditate and they experience enhanced positive emotions 15 months after the intervention. So this was an easy thing for them to do. And they 
and they kept having their positive emotions. Positivity, positive emotions correlated positively with the number of minutes spent meditating daily. So you probably, the, the more you meditate, the longer the effects, but that doesn't mean that you have to meditate for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour every day. Now I do a meditation practice where I practice a meditation. I think it's 50 minutes. It's long. I'm not doing it with animals. This is for my meditation practice. It was isn't for my animal Reiki practice. And it's a different type of meditation, so it's easy. But for the meditations that we teach in um, animal Reiki, for me, unless I'm with an animal, they're a lot harder. So if I do the Joshin Kokyoho breath on my own, I can't do that on my own for half an hour. My mind starts to go and I just get out of it. Um, if I'm with an animal, I can easily just because I have a purpose, right? I have an intent, but for myself, I just don't do it like I should, or even like the precepts. I, I like hacks, but I will hear, I say this. This also comes from um, tiny habits. When you start small, it builds on it, right? So I had to start small. I have ADD. I had to start small with the let animals leave method. I couldn't sit for half an hour and do Joshin Kokyo breathing with an animal. I had to sit with the animal and focus on the precepts and my breath. And that got me through to a half an hour. But if I was sitting by myself trying to do that, I couldn't. There's something magical that happens when an animal connects with you. You feel their energy and you feel that. And plus there's a purpose, right? I want to stay in my meditation because I'm here for you. So I had an intent. I had a purpose. But if I don't have a purpose, it's really hard for me to stay. So there's lots of hacks. And I loved reading that study because I'd read that before a couple different ones that even with regular meditation, you don't need more than 10 minutes. You can even get by with a couple minutes, five minutes. So don't say, oh, I can't meditate today because I don't have enough time. You have one minute, you have two minutes, you have enough time to meditate. That meditation can be as simple as doing the precepts, saying the all is well mantra, just a few times, following your breath slowing your breath down. Those are all really powerful. You can even just take the loving kindness meditation and repeat it. Just say it out loud. May I um, feel safe. May I have peace. May I be happy. May I be filled or blessed with loving kindness. You can say that three times in the morning, three times at night. I can guarantee you, you're going to see a difference in your life. You can also start off with, you know, you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, I got in a fight with someone. Okay, I'm going to offer the loving kindness meditation to them without expectation, right? It's a gift. We give gifts without expectation of anything in return. And that means a result as well. So you just say, may you have peace. May you feel safe. May you be happy. May you be blessed with loving kindness. That's a really easy thing to do and it's something that's so incredibly easy to share, right? And you never know what will happen if you do share that. So having that loving kindness as just a very simple meditation. And there is, and I'll put a link to his book. And I know I've mentioned this many, many times, but there's a book uh, by BJ Fogg, Dr. BJ Fogg called Tiny Habits. It's an incredible book because he talks all about how when you start off tiny, you can create a habit very, very easily. So for him, he was he has really tight teeth and he wasn't flossing his teeth and he was, you know, getting problems. And the dentist said, you have to floss your teeth. So he said, I just started with one tooth. Every morning, do one tooth. That's it. You just stop. One tooth, one tooth at night, one tooth in the morning. And then after a week or so, you start adding more, right? But you don't add more at first. If you want to go work out, you put your shoes by the door. Every day, you just put your shoes by the door. You don't have to do anything more. And there's a lot of power in that because a lot of times you're like, well, if I'm going to put my shoes by the door, I might as well put them on. But maybe you still don't go work out, but you put them on. So you do that for another week or so. And then you're like, well, I have my shoes on. This is kind of silly. I'm going to go for a short walk. And then you start building on it. Well, it's the same thing with our practice. If you start really super tiny and small, then you can actually create a very solid and very doable practice. I did this when I had to cut carbs. I was eating, I mean, this was years ago. I haven't had a sandwich in like, I mean, I've had a sandwich, but not really in like 30 years. So I had to give up gluten 
and you can't give up gluten all the way. But I thought, okay, sandwiches are something I don't eat all the time. I ate pasta more. I can give up sandwiches. And so like, you know, for six months, I just didn't eat sandwiches, still ate pasta. But then when I was like, okay, with sandwiches and now it's like pasta, okay, I'm just going to put more vegetables and more, you know, filling instead of noodles. And then, you know, they have gluten-free now, but back then they didn't. So I would just use other stuff and you start to wean yourself off, but it's not a, okay, I'm going to do this. Now I, there are people that'll, I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm not going to smoke anymore. Boom. They don't do it. And I am in awe of those people. I don't know how they do it, but that's not me. I, that's why I love tiny habits. So if you're someone who has a really hard time incorporating habits, get the book, Tiny Habits by BJ Fogg. He has it in audio um, and Kindle and hardback, but it's, it's a great book. And he talks all about different things, losing weight, all kinds of different things, overeating, all different ways that you can incorporate tiny habits. Carolyn, you came on video. Did you want to share anything? No, oh, I can't hear you. You're on mute. Wait, you're on mute, so I can't. So I'm just assuming maybe you just went on camera. <laughs> oh, can't can't hear you. Let's see. Oh, okay, I figured it out. Go. <laughs> Thank you. No, um, sorry. No, I didn't have anything specific to say. I just had was doing my walk and I found a bench, so I thought I'll turn my camera on because at least I won't be like moving. So I'm just here to say hi to everybody. Well, hi. Did you have anything yeah. to share about the loving kindness meditation while you're here? Um. No, I was too busy uh, organizing my 60th birthday last week. So I I should have done love and kindness, but I actually didn't think about it. So well, now <laughs> this that, week, this week. Now that you know the science behind it, now yeah. you will be encouraged, right? Yeah. So congratulations on 60. You look amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> when is your birthday, Carolyn? It's actually a Friday. Oh. But we sell it. Yeah, we celebrated it last weekend because Mother's Day is coming up this weekend. And I thought people might be busy. So we just did it last weekend. So, oh. yeah. So now. Oh. Yay. Well, happy early yeah. birthday. And congratulations thank you. on your party. Yay. Thanks. And thank you for unmuting and saying hi. Yeah. So does anyone else want to share something about? Oh, Diane, you um unmuted. Did you have something to say? I, uh. I actually fell asleep listening to you. I don't know why. <laughs> so I was out of it for a couple of minutes. Um, I'll tell you what I did with this. I did it for about a week. Uh -huh. And what I found with it um, is it tempered like what you were saying, your, your, your whole being where you're not overly anxious or overly under. Everything was kind of just, okay, okay, it, it, it flows. And that made a big difference. And you know what I'm going to do with it? You know, my teacher was Alice and she, she allows us to come and join her other classes. Mm -hmm. And if we want to teach for a day, we could do that too, like a subject. Mm -hmm. So I picked, uh, it's level two and, and I picked a class, I picked that I'm going to, um, teach about the third symbol and it talks about the oneness and all that. And I'm actually going to pass this on to them and tell them that this would definitely help them with that feeling of oneness. Absolutely. That's so funny that you should say that because um, Dawn and I were in, were in class earlier today um, and Dawn Rorble and um, it, the third symbol is about loving kindness, right? Exactly. It's about exactly. that connection, that yeah. deeper level of connection. Yeah. So, so for people like at level two, if they want to share that feeling with others, they don't necessarily have to do the Hon Chazé Shonen or the, the symbol. Exactly, exactly. And doing this actually even better than those meditations. I just think it, it does bring compassion and it does bring that feeling of oneness if you do it often. So the reason I wanted to join today was because you said you were going to find like shorter methods of it. I was wondering, you know, how that was going to go because it is long, you know. I mean, I think that the it's, it's great. It's not that I'm finding shorter methods. It's just you can make it your own yeah, right? yeah you can like choose to pick a person to send it to um it's good for them to practice the longer version at first just so they can understand the flow of it uh which is why i have this great workbook that i'll send to everybody because it walks you through all the steps of doing it for right. yourself for people you love for people you don't know right. very well and then for people you have a hard time with and then for all of humanity right yeah 
So that's a very long meditation, but you can take one part of it and make it your own. You can also make it shorter. You know, may you be filled with loving kindness. You can say that. Um, may I be filled with loving kindness. May my mother be filled with loving kindness. May yeah. the postman be filled with loving kindness. May, you know, my ex-brother-in-law be filled with loving kindness and yeah. may all humanity be filled with loving kindness. You can do something like that. Now it's probably going to take longer to get the effects if they shorten it too much, but it doesn't have to be a long rambling script. It can be like the one I use, which I'll put in the um, recap email again, which is just really short. Hey, Kelly. Um, so it, it's just making that their own, but right. the more they do it again, tiny habits, right? If you right. start with just the one line, may you be blessed with loving kindness. And that they keep, okay, oh, that makes me feel good. That feels good. Okay, so now maybe I'll say, may I be filled with peace? May I be filled with loving kindness? And then they can just keep adding a line as they go through it. Because again, it doesn't have to be all this huge thing all at once. And, and actually the original, like way origins of this, what they were saying way back when, because everything was a lot more verbose and a lot more heavy and didn't, wasn't so simplified. We've, right. we've simplified this over the years, right. um, completely different, but the energy of it is the same. The energy so is the same. Yes, exactly. And, and I used your words and <laughs> I, you know what I did? I took it on YouTube. There's so many of them and yeah. they have different words. Everybody yeah. uses something different, yes. but I liked yours and I have five, you know, sentences going of the different things. Yeah. Um, and, and I changed it a little bit, you know, added and subtracted a little bit. And like I said, I'm going to send it to them, but I found it very good. And, you know, I have a modality it's called TAT it's tapas acupressure technique. And uh -huh. in that they have a uh, forgiveness, forgiveness lines, oh. which reminds me of that one. Like when you say it's so hard sometimes for people to right. send it to people that you're not happy with, and it is hard. But we have that in there. And so I kind of, I didn't add that into it, but I think of that all the time. You know, they have, we, I apologize to everyone and I forgive everyone and I forgive myself and all that kind of stuff. Right. And if you find it hard to say, you know, to say, I love you to someone that you're angry with, you just say, all right, you know, I'm going to do the best I can for now and whatever it is, it is. And maybe I'll feel different about it tomorrow and do it again. Exactly. And that's you know? 100%. Yeah. And it works. It works. It does soften you. I find that because I have a, you know, there's, I guess everybody has people they don't want to really deal with. And oh, yeah. uh, I find, I find after a few times of changing words around to where, okay, you know, I don't really feel it now. I'm being perfectly honest, but I'm going to send it to you. Maybe it'll make me feel better. After five or six times of that, you actually do feel better about it. Absolutely, Diane. I'm so glad you said that because yeah. it's it's so true. And, and you know, we have to if we look at it. So, like, let's say you let's let's put it in animal terms because we're all here because of animal Reiki. Right. So, let's look at it in animal terms. If you have an angry pit bull and that pit bull's like coming at the fence and drooling and just growling, or a German Shepherd or any kind of angry dog, what is going to get through to them? It's not going to be me coming in. Okay, I'm going to be the boss of you. It's not going to be me coming in with a bad attitude or a scared attitude. It's going to be me coming in. I see you. Mm -hmm. I, I'm here for you, right? In that loving way. And pretty soon that love, that energy of love starts to calm them down, calm them down, calm them down. And there's no expectation, right? Again, animals teach us. We've got to let go of that expectation because once we put an expectation it's like that big butt in the room. We then start to weigh it down and it's not as effective. We right. want this to be purely from our heart. And I love that you said that because it's so true. You it's start to, after a while of doing it, feel like I'm not. You feel different. See them, right? Yeah, you feel different. And, and the other thing to remember, and it is, you don't have to put it into the meditation, but the other thing to remember is when when you send love to somebody, all you're doing is helping yourself. The other person, right? maybe they get better. Maybe they don't. Maybe they accept it. Maybe they don't. But you're healing yourself. So yeah. it's for you. Yes. I thank you for that. Because we can't change what other people feel. And what does anger do? It makes us sick. It right. makes us weak. 
Like if you, you know, if, if you believe in muscle testing, you can do muscle testing, tell, tell yourself, oh, I'm beautiful, I'm this, you'll be strong. If you say, oh, you know, I'm ugly, I'm not smart, you go weak. Um, so muscle testing on that is a really easy way to show what anger does. Or when we do the smiling meditation, right? Um, we smile, we think of something happy. If you think of something sad or even neutral, you can feel your whole body start to get heavy. Whereas right. love creates that lightness, that expansiveness. Yeah. And anger creates that heaviness. Mm -hmm. Not a grounded heaviness. It's a, I'm stuck in mud. I'm in quicksand heaviness, right? Yes. Well, thank you so much, Diane. I'm so glad you ended and shared that. That's so important. And so um, I don't know if anyone else has something to say. I wanted to read what Gretchen wrote. It's kind of disheartening to realize that nearly a billion people are meditating, but yet it seems that the world is in more turmoil and more intolerant than ever. And it's it's so true, Gretchen, which is why we, as this beautiful community, we have the tools to, oh, and I guess Gretchen, did Gretchen drop off? Um, we have the tools to help ourselves and help others, right? We are not without um, the power to help. And we really have to remember that when we're looking at all the different practices that we do and loving kindness, even though it's not a traditional animal Reiki practice, it is part of what we do. It is increasing loving kindness within ourselves and then sharing that with others. And like what Diane was saying, when you get to level two, Honshaze Shonen, that is love and compassion. That is love and kindness. And that is a way to connect. So you can see how in this practice too, and even at the beginning, you know, the precepts are the energy of loving kindness. Um, the healing bridge is the energy of loving kindness we're all we're using things that are already in existence in our animal reiki practice but it is in a more formal um method and next week what we're going to talk about is the importance of taking classes even when and and don uh, rorbel she's 70 we were talking about this earlier in class you know even when you're 70 you know there's some people that believe well why why are you still learning if you're 70 well why wouldn't you? We need to be learning until the day we leave this earth, because it, when we're learning, we're improving. When we're improving, we're helping, we're, we're holding space, right? And so what Gretchen was saying, oh, it's really sad, but we can't get caught up in that sadness. We need to focus on the positive and that loving kindness and sharing that energy. So I'm not sure if anyone else wants to unmute. Kelly, I don't know if you want to unmute and share with your experience with the loving kindness. We just went over 18 scientific studies that go through everything between physical um, curing and mental well being and self criticism healing. And it was just really great. So I'm going to put a link. I was telling them that I did all this research and a lot of the studies that I found were in this one page thing. So I'm just going to send a link to all of you so you can go on there and get all the studies. But yeah. Hey, Cal. Hey, yeah, sorry I'm late. I uh, had some last minute stuff come up, but um, I think the thing that I noticed the most is just that um, a general peacefulness around things that and people that um, have an effect on me um, when I'm not doing the practice. Uh, and, um, you know, for me, that's just a huge thing, especially when I get to the, the outer circle. Um, and also, I, I, um, I like what um, Diane was saying, I mean, we definitely have to, um, you know, forgive for ourselves and we have to learn how to take care of um, these things because it affects us more than, than the person that we're actually angry at or, or dislike. Um, if we're not, um, if we're uh, focusing on them, they don't even know it, right? <laughs> just like right. out there doing their thing. And so we're only hurting ourselves by not, um, not clearing that out of ourselves and forgiveness is, is how we do that. And I, it's a beautiful practice for that. Well, I think too, the energy of the energy of when we are dissatisfied with someone, they may not feel it on a conscious level, but there's that unconscious level where they're feeling it. Or just like, you know, if you're in a room and someone's in a really bad mood, you can feel it. Um, but so, you know, we have to be really careful with our thoughts and, and I'm saying this out loud for myself 
because, you know, my ex-brother-in-law just has really done some really horrible things and not to me necessarily, but to my nephew. And that's really hard for me because I see my nephew suffer, but thankfully through meditation and, and counseling, my nephew has a really healthy viewpoint on his father, like much healthier than me. And he's basically is, you know, I forgive my dad and I forgive who he is because he was raised a certain way and his life presented certain things. And I mean, my God, my nephew's 17 and he's just like, oh my God, I just adore this child because he's so smart. A really mature response. And well, and, and, and he was, you know, it's, but it's been meditation. It's been counseling. And he said, I can see he was raised a certain way. He's an attorney. He lives his life a certain way and he doesn't have a lot of love in his life. So if he doesn't have love in his life, and this is what Marcus says, how can he share it with me? Because he doesn't have anything to share. And I'm just like, oh my God, you're so amazing. Which is why I put my life on hold for this child because he's amazing. <laughs> but he teaches me that, right? It, it was such a great point. We can't change who a person is, but if they feel loved, and that's basically what Marcus was saying is dad doesn't feel loved. When you feel love, you can start to share love. You can be more compassionate. You can be more understanding. Um, and it's easy to not like people. It's harder to love them, right, Cal? Yeah, and I, I think though there are times when we we have no control, you know, over the people in politics or whatever, right? So they have no idea how we're feeling, but it tears us up, right? So so that's where you know the work is really important. I think um, also because we we have to learn to live with things that we can't control, um, but. And when we're with somebody in proximity, a family member or somebody we see regularly, like Marcus and his dad, I mean, that's that's such a mature response. And and so, you know, that does bring healing. Um, yes. And I think in the end, it brings healing anyway, even though we may never meet a person. But that energy going out there, that forgiveness is really important. But we have to start with ourselves always. Yeah. And, and you know, and I think that also you know, cause we were talking about little hacks that you could do. So start small. And I think another thing that we can do is when we start to feel ourselves going to that place, like, you know, right now with all the wars and, and the famine in, in Palestine and all these other things that are happening and the war in the Ukraine, that when we think of those things, if we could stop ourselves and say, may you be blessed with peace. May you be blessed with health. May you be blessed. So we stop ourselves, right? So as an anchor, we can use the loving kindness as a mindfulness anchor. And when we start feeling just like the precepts, bring that mindfulness to us, you know, for today only do not anger. When we get angry, you're like up oh, for today only, but we could do that also with the loving kindness meditation. We can start making it a habit when you see the news or I don't watch the news. I try never to, but I walk into houses and they've got the news on so making that just conscious effort to say, you know what, may you be filled with peace. Because if we do that, we will create change. Now, there's one thing, and I, I can't remember who, this was years ago, I heard it. And I can't remember who said it. And I don't know if there's a study that proves this. I know that there are peace studies where when the 7,000 Vedic um, priests, when they were meditating, there was a measurable drop in terrorism by 75%. And that's when apartheid ended. That's when the Berlin Wall came down for this short time. But unfortunately, they ran out of funding. But it was a very small group of people, only 7,000, right? And they created huge change. They also in the 70s, like right now, we have a lot of protests. Now, these kids, they don't know how to protest. If you go on a protest and you take over a building, back in the 70s, they would have food, they'd have water, they'd have everything. These are kids that grew up in the generation of everybody gets a trophy. They go on their protest and they're like, wait a second, um, we don't have food, we don't have water, what are we gonna do? <laughs> they're not prepared. So different kind of protests are happening now, but back in the 70s, the protests they think, because they were love filled, right? They were love fests. It was all about sending love. They were protesting the Vietnam War. They said that the energy that people were emitting during that time actually helped heal things that were going on. So at that time before the protests, and everything, Russia was a powerhouse. After this, Russia was no longer a powerhouse, right? Um, the Cuban Missile Crisis went away. 
right? That was a really scary thing that was going on in the 70s. Like a lot of us are older, so we remember these things. But they they were saying, and I God, I wish I could remember. I'll, I'll look this up. I'll try to find this. They were saying that the energy of these peaceful protests, the energies of these hippies, the energy of love that was really predominant during the 70s was actually healing. And that's something that's really missing in the protests in current times. People aren't protesting in the name of love. They're protesting in the name of something else, right? Of, of what they stand for. So it's it's not creating that same energy that in the 70s was being created and, and is healing. Just like with the Vedic um, priests, that was healing. They were focused on peace. That's what they were. Um, uh, did you want to say something, Cal? Yeah, you just reminded me of Mother Teresa who said, if you invite me to a a uh, war protest, I won't come. But if you invite me to a protest for or a, a rally for peace, I'll be there. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's I love mindset. that. That's a right. I need to add that to our little thing because that is so that just goes hand in hand with what we're saying, right? Emanate love and kindness, not um quote about protest. I just want to get that. But you're supposed to protest for something, not against something. Right. Exactly. For peace. No matter what for it love. is. Yes. I mean, maybe we all need to go down to those kids and tell them, now you got to protest for something better, kids. And then you'll get food and water. I just cracked up when I, when I saw that. I can't remember yeah. which, which school that happened at. It was like, but we need food and water. It's yeah, like, I don't remember which school either. I, I thought it was quite amusing kids you gotta be prepared for these things yeah go and know what your plan is but yeah so it's you know it's difficult times right now and and again a lot of the youth today they were brought up in really good times whereas a lot of us older ones we were brought up with grandparents who had gone through you know um who had gone through like world war ii and and relatives who had gone through Vietnam War, you know, so there were things that we understood, we understood a little bit more what suffering was about, whereas a lot of these kids now their suffering is, oh, they don't get the game they want, or oh, they don't get the toy they want, you know, there's not the suffering in this, so they have a harder time, but we can help them by teaching loving kindness, by sharing loving kindness, like, you know, for those of you who want to teach, but maybe aren't necessarily teaching, do a children's class, do it a teenager's class, you know, do a high school class, do a college class showing the benefits of loving kindness, because we are, have, we know something, those of us who do the let animals lead method, um, we have a lot of tools that we can then share, but even sharing the loving kindness meditation, giving the kids the facts behind it, right? Because kids nowadays, they want facts. They just don't want to Hey, um, oh, this is just do this because it's good for you, right? Not like my generation. Just do it because I said so. So um Rorble says, one of my favorite films to show my students was admissions, available to watch free at peacenow.com. I met the person who wrote the film, if anyone is interested in the backstory. Yeah, Don, why don't you unmute and um share a little bit about that? I don't think I know anything about that. So admissions is a 20-minute film. It's about probably came out I think 2011 or 2012 and I was still teaching at that time and the and the playwright was on campus when this was shown and I showed it every semester after that um, but the setting is so appropriate to what's going on with the the protests about Israel and Palestine right now he picked that because um, he was asked to write a film on a, a like a topic of peace and he picked that kind of that setting because he thought peace was so difficult there but it's 20 minutes i really recommend you watch it um it was actually written right after right after 9 11 but it wasn't produced until 2011 or 2012. he actually wrote it right at, for healing himself right after 9 11. um but that site there's a lot of countries that have departments of peace in addition to departments of war, we don't. But um, so Peace Now is about that. If you go to the web page, it you have to might have to scroll a little bit to find it, but it's out there. I really recommend it for an interesting perspective on um, peace or the idea of you know 
heaven and why it's there or any of that, but it's just a, it's just a great film. Well, thank you so much for that, Don. I love that. You know, and this is another thing that's so powerful about our community, that we all have different experiences and we come on and we share and we all learn and grow from that. And so thank you so much. And Don put the link there. And I will also put the link, we'll put the chat up on the YouTube uh, replay, but I'll also put the link in the recap email so you have it for easy access. So we're coming down to the end. I would like to do a short loving kindness meditation, but does anyone else have anything else they wanna share about the loving kindness or about anything before we um, go to our meditation? Yeah, Anne, yeah, of course. I just wanted to share something about um, those people that are very linked to scientific um, studies to have proof, even though we know things work and they don't need scientific studies because it's obvious. But um, it was brought to my attention that on the front cover of Scientific America of 2022 on the front page, they were talking about quantum entanglement. And if anybody knows about what that is, it was the Nobel Peace Prize winner got that. But we know things are censored. And if it's challenging the status quo of what's going on now, on this earth, then it gets buried. So, but quantum entanglement is just what we're talking about. If we send loving kindness and invite someone in or an animal in, it doesn't matter. They will choose, their higher self will choose to step into that. So the, it's a frequency and it's kind of like, how does your dog know when you're coming home? They've even installed cameras in people's homes and right. 15 minutes before they come home, they're waiting by the door. How do they know that? Did someone tell them that it's called quantum entanglement so it doesn't matter where we are in the world on the other side of the world we you know oh i'm thinking about my friend and then you call her oh i was just thinking about you it's that so we know that's real it's been proven real so if we're sharing love that's what's going to be put out in the universe if we're sharing war and hate and you know um instead of more of an entitlement instead of an inclusiveness and a separateness that's what we're creating so um and also the chaos that's going on in this world someone made a comment why is it so crazy right now if everybody's meditating so many people billion people in the world are meditating uh, it takes a it actually is but the what i understand and what i feel is the chaos has to get to a certain height because in order for the light to come in, there has to be darkness, right? So right. they both are are necessary for healing to happen. So once we get past the critical mass, and I think a few years ago it was at 24% of the higher frequency, we're already there. So mankind is, is, is going forward. It just looks as though we're not because information is censored and whatever makes the news is what's gonna sell the advertisement and it's not loving kindness, right? We know that, <laughs> right? <laughs> And so it's called quantum entanglement and you can look that up and that's what the placebo effect is. How does that work with humans? You know, they don't know if they're getting the real medicine or not, but yet those people that are getting a fake sugar pill are healing. Um, it doesn't work with animals, right? Because right. they don't know that. So there is no, I mean, it works the same for humans, even with our small minds and for animals and for trees, for nature, for everybody. So quantum entanglement is real and it's whatever energy we put out there. And if we, you know, hold someone else in the darkness, it brings ourselves to darkness. If we hold someone else in the light and in love, it brings us to the love. It's pretty simple. <laughs> and, and you're right. There are, you know, more people who are compassionate and loving than not. You know, um, when you look in your world, when you start looking for people who are happy, you'll see people smile at you a lot. People are kind. It's just if you're looking for um, difficulty, you're going to get difficulty. It's yeah, all whatever your event is and whatever you want to focus on. That's why the loving kindness can keep us in that beautiful state. And we'll see the higher frequencies. We'll see the greater good. And we won't focus on the lower stuff. And it brings everybody around us up to that frequency also, you know, but Absolutely. it's just our thoughts, not even our words, our thoughts, you know, uh, Dr. Emoto did the book on yeah. the water crystals. You yell at the water, you, you know, it turns into this ugly, you know, cell when you look under the microscope and when you send loving kind thoughts and play beautiful music, how does that happen? It's energy. 
and it's in humans, it's in nature, it's in animals. So there's your proof right there. And that umbrellas everything, right? That's that, the kindergarten. That's, right. that's the so, kindergarten test that he did. Remember the rice? There was two jars of rice. One they said nice things to the kids in kindergarten, I think, and the other one they didn't. And the one that they said nice things to, I think it was fresh for a month. And the other one got spoiled within a week or two. So it became black. Same jars of rice, yet the energy around them. And, and it's such a great, I love that example because our words have energy. And the energy is what can either help or hurt. So just and our thoughts, even without the words, Leah, right? right? Our thoughts. You know? I mean, that's what we're doing. We're, we're going inside of ourselves and going into our heart with those beautiful thoughts and those beautiful feelings. And those animals feel that. Everybody around us feels that. And so we just shift. Exactly. So, the, so again, that's why this is such an important meditation. And I'm going to give you a quick hack. Okay, because again, um, oh, a high school did that with two plants in their lobby. Did they, Kelly? And one of them died and one of them flourished. You know, it's, it's this very simple science, very simple science, but we think, you know, because again, you know, we're one body, one person, what can we do? Our words don't mean anything. Um, you know, especially if you're used to not being heard, right? So you think your words aren't powerful, your thoughts aren't powerful, but they actually are. So I know we're a little bit past time where I'm going to give you a very simple loving kindness. So just like I spoke about earlier, you know, tiny habits. So just doing this, um, very simple, we're just gonna use one line, but we're gonna use it for everybody. We're going to bring to mind um, an animal that brings us so much joy in our heart. Um, may you be blessed with loving kindness. We're gonna bring ourselves in. May I be blessed with loving kindness. May We're gonna bring in someone we love deeply. May you be blessed with um, loving kindness. We're gonna bring in a neutral person, again, same line, and then somebody where we, maybe have a little time with, and then we'll bring it back to ourselves. Okay. So this is just going to be a really nice, um, you know, just a few minutes and, and it's a short one. So again, remember what the study show less than 10 minutes is effective. So we bring our hands into God's show. We close our eyes to cut out all outside distractions. We set our intent that we're open to whatever it is that we need most at this moment in time. And we take a couple cleansing breaths, breathing in deeply through our nose, pulling our breath deep into our belly as far as you can. Expand your belly or your chest, whichever. And then slowly release your breath out your mouth as if you were releasing your breath through a straw. A couple more of those breaths, breathing in very deeply when you breathe in, expanding your body, and then slowly releasing your breath out your mouth and with your breath goes all tension you're holding on to in your body and start to feel the relaxation in your shoulders in your jaw in your back feel your body starting to become more peaceful and less stressed whenever you're ready you can put your hands face up or face down on your lap and i'd like you to bring to mind an animal you love with all your heart Bring them to mind and see them and say in your mind, may you be blessed with loving kindness. And now we bring to mind ourselves and we say to ourselves, may I be blessed with loving kindness. Now bring to mind someone you love deeply and say to them, may you be blessed with loving kindness. And then bring in someone you may not know quite so well, maybe a neighbor you don't talk to or the postman or just someone you see every day. And then say to them in your head, in your heart, may you be blessed with loving kindness. And now let's bring to mind someone we have difficulty with. Someone who may make us angry or anxious or frustrated. And we say to them, may you be blessed with loving kindness. And now we bring it back to ourselves. May I be blessed with loving kindness.
now we bring our hands into Gasha. We set our intent. And we're stopping the meditation, ending the meditation. And hopefully that just like little short one, again, tiny habits. You're going to want to build onto the regular um, loving kindness meditation. But just to start, you can even just say it once. Or say it three times, say the line, may you be blessed with loving kindness to one person, you know, in the morning and at night. But you're going to see that that energy of the loving kindness meditation really gets into your body, into your psyche, into your heart, so that it becomes easier and easier and easier to send love to those who you love deeply and those who may, it might be a little bit harder. So thank you all so much. I love this. Next week, we're going to talk about why it's so important to take a class um, because this has been coming up so people are like oh well if i'm already doing reiki you know like like kristen at care of course she was already doing a form of reiki with her animals she knows to be calm she knows to be peaceful she knows to share love should she take a class well there's a lot of power in taking the class and next week dawn's gonna um help me talk she's got she's also a teacher and she's got a lot to say but we had some really great discussion earlier today about why you should take a class, even if you're 70, which was something that was said to her, and then why you should take a class no matter what your age is, right? Because knowledge is power. And the more we learn, the more we grow. And an expanded mind can never go back. So it's a really good thing to study. Also, when you study, you get things that you don't normally get. I'm studying with Joe Dispenza right now. I'm doing one of his courses. I'm going to go see him live and do a week retreat with him. And I'm so excited because the, the actual, the recorded class is so much better than the books. I've read all of his books and I've done the practices, but I didn't get out of it. What I got from doing even his self-study course. I, my whole just practice is changing my meditation practice. So, you know, it's really important to take those classes where it's, even if it's a self-study, as long as there's recordings, but instruction is so important because you can have natural talent but if you want to be really good at something, you need that expert mentorship. So next week, that's what we're going to be talking about. I know Kelly's got a lot to say about this too. So hopefully she'll be able to join us. But if you do want to join, you have something to say, please consider joining us next week when we talk about teaching. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a beautiful week. Bye.